Hey, it's Microchasm. And we're back with some Silk Hue. Wanted to mention a couple of things about the previous videos. One of them is that in one of the videos, I said that an orc followed me into a hallway because it was confident. And that is not really the case. Orcs will follow you into hallways if they're aggressive. When they're confident, they'll usually follow tactics. It's just that on that occasion, that orc decided to follow me into the hallway. So I just wanted to make that clear. They will sometimes still de decide to follow you into a hallway. I'm not 100% sure if that's just their exercising their free will or if it was because I was slightly injured or something like that. But normally they won't unless they're aggressive. So I wanted to make that clear. Uh, the other thing was that in the previous video I said something about drinking an herb of terror. And what I meant to say was eating an herb of terror. So I wanted to clear the air on that one. All right. So uh, in the first two videos, I talked about the vast majority of the major concepts that I wanted to discuss when it comes to basically like a beginner's guide to sill. There's really just two more things, one small topic and one large one that I wanted to go through in this video. And I was a little bit feeling like I kind of front loaded it all. Now I'm going to have one video that's almost entirely about one topic. It feels unbalanced, but I think it's better this way. This video is going to be basically entirely about smithing. And smithing is a, is a great mechanic. If you want to play a smith, then I think this will help you to get started. I'm not an expert on smithing. I'm not really an expert on anything when it comes to sale, if I'm being honest. But, um, you know, it's for helping new players get started. Uh, if you're feeling overwhelmed with information, you can stick with the first two videos. And that'll give you what you need to know uh, to get started with sale in general. And then this will be just about smithing. However, there is the one other topic, the small topic, which is freedom of movement. And I wanted to discuss freedom of movement right away in this video uh, and get it out of the way so we can move on to the main topic. So when I first started playing Sill, I had no idea what freedom of movement meant. My understanding is that it comes from D&D &D, and it's in the other band, band variants. So I think the assumption with the Sill Manual was that everyone would know what it is. But I didn't know. Uh, and I think maybe it's possible some other people won't, won't know. So freedom of movement prevents you, your movement from being restricted. And I mean, that makes sense when you say it, but you know, it didn't occur to me when I first started playing. So uh, your movement could be restricted by something like um, maybe an adder cop, which is one of the types of spiders, could shoot a web at you, uh, or there could be a web trap, uh, you could fall into a pit, uh, that kind of thing. Or you could be entranced by a dragon or a spider of Gorgoroth, or some other monsters. And freedom of movement will prevent you from being restricted in that way. It'll help you to roll uh, and sort of beat those restrictions. Um, if you're there, there's a couple different ways to get freedom of movement. So one is a, a, a ring of freedom, it just gives you sort of passive general freedom of movement. Another way would be to sing Song of Freedom, and another way would be to use a staff of freedom. And then there's other items that have freedom of movement on them as well, uh, like as an item ego. Uh, if you're singing Song of Freedom or you use a Staff of Freedom, it has the additional benefit of clearing away traps and rubble from the area that you can see. So I think that's about uh, all I need to talk about as far as that goes. So uh, the rest of the video will be about, uh, about smithing and anything else that occurs to me at the time. So we are going to start a new character. Uh, I, I was enjoying playing that last character. And to be clear, you don't have to play Undoldor of Feanor to be a smith. Definitely any character can be a smith. 
but I am going to start a new character to have a nice controlled environment, and I am going to play uh, House of Feanor uh, because they have the smithing affinity. So that'll help us take an extra ability. It makes the abilities cheaper to have that affinity. We're going to give ourselves three strength, four dexterity, four constitution, and three grace. Uh, I can't say that this is like the best uh, stat distribution or anything like that, but I think it's a fairly balanced one. So I, I think it'll be fine for our purposes. We're going to give ourselves some melee and some evasion. And then we're actually just going to not take anything else. And the reason we're going to do that is I want to go ahead and find a forge and then talk about taking smithing and taking abilities and that kind of thing. So it's going to accept that. I'm going to accept, press enter, enter, and tab for a random name. Uh, we got to keep going until we find one that we like. Imalarath. Okay, I like that one. Let's get started. We do have to do one other thing, which is set our options. I know we've done this in other videos, but you have to do it every time you start a new character. And we should be good. All right. So I am going to explore the first level. Most likely uh, explore the whole level and fight everything. Uh, we should be fine with the stats that we have. I mean, we didn't use all of our experience, but uh, you know we're playing a Noldor, and we have enough experience to um to get through this first level. Shouldn't be an issue. We'll just eat this strip of dried meat. And we do want to kill everything that we can find. Um, or I should have maybe a oh, murky brown potion. Okay, so that's a, a potion of orcish liquor for sure. Don't really need to identify that. So we know what it is already. I shouldn't be fighting this one. There's a bird nearby. Yeah, okay. We're going to fight everything because we just want to get as much experience as we can get. to benefit our smithing. It's not going to be a huge amount, but it'll help a bit. And of course, there's always a few consumables. Uh, the dagger is special. Let's try it out. Use D. Dagger of Quivian. And, um, it's a plus three. That's great. For now, we're not going to be singing anything, so we're just going to keep using the curved sword. But um, something to keep in mind. This is going to be a combat character, though, and I don't think it's really going to be an assassin. These boots are the same, yeah. So probably not going to use that dagger of Quibian, and it's worth carrying around at least. We've got plenty of inventory space. We might end up having... Sometimes you have some issues, even in the early game, because we didn't take any uh, will and we didn't take any perception, but... I don't know, in my experience, it's it's very rarely an issue. You know, we could get blinded or something like that, but... Let's kill this orc, yeah. I mean, it's it's often worth killing orcs, even if they're not going to give you a lot of experience. I'm going to press the Shift-L here and look around the, look around the level. It could be worth it to kill orcs, just because they can drop um, consumables. The same is, like, is true for any... Um, Humanoid, so humans, orcs, trolls. Okay, I was gonna. I was hoping. So sometimes, uh, if if one wolf sees you, you can pull it into the corridor and take it out, and then go out and try to pull in another another wolf. At that time, they all saw us, but no problem. They have not especially high morale. They run pretty easily. Just close the door. So. Since we're playing a smith, all we're looking for right now is a forge. And there is a guaranteed forge at floors 100, 300, and 500. Which is a change in SIL 1.5 from SIL 1.4.2. So new, new change to try to make smithing more viable in the early game. I think is probably a good change. It's going to help us out here to have a nice early forge. We did get brown, 
blinded there. Um, we're gonna try to. We're gonna actually just. You know what? We're just gonna step on the trap. We were, we've already been blinded, and we'd like to retreat until we uh, get our sight back. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Um, we're pressing a control in a direction to disarm that trap. Uh, we failed to disarm it, so we got blinded again. And again. Um, there we go. Okay. I'm not especially worried. I mean, these guys can um, disarm you, and there's a few of them, but I feel strong enough to handle them. Yeah, we keep getting hit by these traps. We'll just wait out the effect. Yep. Yeah, so we took, we uh, hit that one wolf, and we're gonna bring it into the corridor and fight it. We can even sneak just to show that this is something you can do. You can fight one wolf, bring it into a corridor. fight another wolf and then yeah we'll fight the last one just to break up the the group a bit we found ourselves a cloak so so far we found a cloak and a pair of boots not a whole lot of equipment sometimes when you're gonna be a smith you can think about like did I find a good weapon in the first two floors or did I find good armor you know if I didn't find I'm kind of like doing this inefficient moving because I'm shift moving here uh, if I found a good weapon, but I didn't find good armor, maybe I want to take armor smith. Um, if it turned out the other way, where I found uh, good armor, but not a good weapon, maybe I want to take weapon smith. So far, we have not really found either one of those two things. We're having a fine time against these orcs, no problem. This is probably the smithing room. You can tell, because the walls... Uh, kind of curve up and down so it's not a regular rectangular room like you would normally see the level generator create so this is probably a vault room that was um, sort of you know user defined and then used by the random number generator and placed uh, yep so it is the forge room we're going to continue to just explore the rest of the floor real quick Let's see first of all if there's uh, any more experience we can gain like uh, killing a few more things. Any more weapons we can we can gather, or, you know, see if uh, we find something good. Although honestly, we're probably just going to take weaponsmith either way, just to show you show everyone how that works. Uh, so you know, it's always good to find additional consumables as well. And also when you're smithing, so smithing takes time. Uh, it's not like a one turn action or anything. I think it takes maybe thirty turns. Um, I've never been 100% clear. We can actually just take a look as we smith and find out. But you can be uninterrupted while you're smithing. Uh, it's not like a big deal to be interrupted. It just means that you're, the thing you make um, isn't finished. And you have to resume after you take care of the monsters. Uh, in later floors, that might be more of an issue. You know, I could imagine you're smithing something. You get interrupted by a group of dangerous monsters and... Uh, you can't get back to the forge or something like that. I, I don't know. That doesn't really happen that much on the first floor. I'm just going to take a quick sip of water here. I've noticed that these videos... Uh, I'm trying to keep them at a certain length, like 35 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. That's what I like as far as the length of Let's Play videos. And also my voice gets a little sore. My throat gets sore, I mean. I'm not used to talking this much. So, you enter the smithing menu by pressing zero. And you don't have to be on top of a forge in order to enter the menu. But you can't actually forge anything until you're standing on top of the forge tile. So I just wanted to show you this is the forge menu. We have base item. So you can start with um, the, the, the actual type of item you're going to make. If you have enchantment, you can enchant... Uh, Enchant the item. Uh, Artifice just gives you additional um, attributes that you can add to the item. You can change the, the numbers, like the amount of damage it does, or the amount of armor that a piece of armor gives you. And you can melt. So, where the vast majority of items 
you don't need to gather equipment. You can kind of just imagine that this forge, I mean, this forge is being used by the forces of Angband to make armor and weapons. So there's just like material, like iron around. But if you want to make a mithril weapon or mithril armor, they're not going to like have that in stock, so to speak. So you have to find either pieces of mithril, which you can find in the dungeon, but they're very, very rare very rare or you can find like a uh, a mithril glove and melt it down but it gives you a certain number of pieces that have to do with the amount of weight so if you find like a mithril long sword that's four pounds and you melt it down you won't be able to make a mithril long sword that's five pounds uh you know it's a it does have a conservation of of uh of matter there so we are going to take some smithing. We pressed uh, uh, the at symbol to go to our character menu, and we're going to press I for increase. We're going to go to smithing, and we're going to add... Uh, we'll take six points of smithing and leave ourselves with 988 experience. We're going to accept that, and then we'll press tab to go to the abilities menu and go to smithing. So you can see that the current price is zero experience. That's because we have the smithing affinity. And these are the different uh, smithing skills. A lot of them are pretty straightforward. Weaponsmith, create weapons. Armor smith, create armor. Jeweler, create jewelry. Which includes, uh, includes horns and lights. Light sources. Enchantment allows you to create special items. It also allows you to determine what enchantments exist on items you encounter. So the, one of the things about smithing is that if you can create a type of item, like let's say that you could, you've taken jeweler as another example. So you could, you could create a ring of frost because you took jeweler. You can also then identify any rings of frost that you find in the dungeon because basically your character knows what rings of frost are. You don't get the experience for identifying them until you actually see them in the dungeon, though. But it, on the turn that you see them, it will be identified and you'll get that 50 experience bonus for identifying an item. So same is true for enchantment. Enchantments are things like um, like slaying weapons, uh, you know, like a sort of gondolin or a sort of Nargothrond. Artifice is the one that lets you do the more customized. So you have a lot of uh, options, and we'll take a look at that. Expertise reduces the time it takes to forge an item by half. I mentioned before it takes some time. And it gains experience and stat costs. So forging items, especially more difficult items, uh, has an experience and stat cost, which is like a stat drain, um, which can't be recovered. Uh, allows you to create more difficult items. Uh, so you the amount of smithing, like your smithing skill. So we have 10 smithing because we have, uh, we took three, or we took six points. And then we have three grace. And your grace boosts your smithing. So in total, uh, uh, we have, well, we have, we would have nine, but then we have plus one because we're Feanorian. So we have 10 in, in total. So you can make an item of 10 difficulty unless you have a uh, masterpiece allows you to make it above the normal difficulty and then grace just gives you a point of grace which will boost your smithing as well as uh, other things um like song and will and perception uh, okay so uh we have to actually take the abilities so let's take a uh, weapon smith let's take jeweler i'm oh, sorry Ar armor smith i have seen a lot of people not a lot of people i've seen several people uh take jeweler early on Jeweler is a, it's a cool ability. You can make some cool stuff. Uh, one of the things you can do is attempt to make a, a ring of secrets early on. And that will give you the alchemy ability so that you don't really have to deal with the ID game. You can, you know, alchemy will identify herbs and potions and stabs and horns for you. So that's kind of one way to sidestep identification. 
Uh, so, like I said, we haven't made a good, or we haven't found a good uh, uh, weapon yet. So let's make ourselves a sword. I'm going to make a character that's as balanced as I can make it, just to talk about the different uh, ways you can customize weapons. So we will make a great sword. No, I think we'll make a bastard sword. Yep, we'll make a bastard sword. And you can see it says negative 2, 3d3, plus 1, 4 pounds. So our character's got 3 strength. And as I said in the last video, the amount that you get to add to the damage sides is either your strength or the weapon's weight, whichever is lower. So in this case, our strength is lower because our strength is 3 and the, and the uh, item weight is 4. Uh, so let's just decrease the weight because we're making our own custom weapon. It's going to be the right weapon for us. So it's going to be 3 pounds. So it's going to be a little easier for us to get critical hits with it. Because again, critical is you have to roll above the opponent's uh, the evasion by 7 plus the weapon weight. So this will be 7 plus 3 or 10 instead of 7 plus 4. A little bit easier to get criticals and we're still making as much use of our strength as we can. And then we can either increase the attack bonus or the damage sides. And both are reasonable things to do. I think in this case, because we're picking a, a pretty heavy weapon, we are going to increase the attack bonus because we, we're going to have a very balanced character. Although increasing damage sides makes the difficulty 9, and increasing the attack bonus makes the difficulty 7. And I would expect that. I think increasing the damage sides is probably better. Because you're doing. Yeah, 3d4 is pretty good. But we're going to increase the damage size anyway. Because I want to try to score some criticals. Even though I'm wield wielding a, a bastard sword. So we're going to make this weapon. We're going to use G. And we're going to see what else we want to make. Let's make some mail. We'll make a mail corslet. We haven't found any body armor yet, and it's always good to have body armor. We'll increase the, I think, the evasion. We can increase the protection as well. Increase the attack bonus. So it won't uh, have... Well, in increasing the attack bonus really means removing the attack malice in this case, because it's minus one. I think we're going to increase the... No, 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 we're going to increase the attack bonus here, because we want to get our, our, our crits as much as possible. And we will decrease the weight. Not a really big deal, but, uh, you know, just so we don't lose too much stealth. So, yeah, again, it's not a big deal, but I, I guess you, you kind of might as well just reduce the weight if you can. Unless you have a heavy armor user, uh, which is an ability in the evasion tree. A quick sip of water again. We're going to use our male corslet, and we'll make one more piece of armor. I think we will use, make a helm. Gloves, boots. Yeah, we'll, we'll make a helm. We'll just make a regular helm. And we will... This one will increase the damage size. Oh, we can do, we can do both. Excellent. And then we'll bring down the weight as much as we can. There we go. Plus zero, 1d3. It's very good for a helm. That's going to help us out a lot. And we'll use F. And now when we step off the forge, we can see it says, you see a forge exhausted. So forges in general have three uses. Uh, sometimes more. Uh, and the tile will represent the number of uses that are remaining. So it'll sort of fade <clears throat> until it's this dark color. So we've exhausted this forge, um, and so we can't use it anymore. For most of the game, you're going to see these regular forges, which are the kind of white, uh, light, um, I don't know, maybe steel color. But there are special forges as well. Uh, there's enchanted forges, and then there's the forge Orodreth. 
and enchanted forges help you uh, with your smithing by allowing you to make more difficult items. And then Orodroth is basically the same, but uh, but even more so. You can make even more difficult items. But Orodroth is extremely rare. Um, I saw somebody say our, uh, our lights out there. Let's uh, add a torch. Uh, I saw somebody say that Orange Earth has a 1 in 1,000 chance to spawn when a floor is generated. Uh, I don't know if they were getting that from the code or if that was just like a general guess, but I say that's probably about right. I've seen it a few times. Most of the time I see it when I'm a pacifist and I just walk right past it. And I think about all the cool stuff I could have made. I have thought about, like, um, it'd be interesting to try to play a a pacifist smith. Uh, make yourself some some good armor with some bonuses that will help, so you can have uh, a higher protection than normal, and maybe some um, some additional benefits from your armor. Which, speaking of additional benefits, we did a very general uh, sort of light uh, smithing. Uh, at the forge at 100 feet and I didn't really go through the um, menu for for um, enchantments so let me do that now I think it's actually fine because um let's I'm, I'm interested here if I go left okay I thought that bottom one might um he might try to move in uh, towards the door and cut me off sometimes they do that sometimes they don't you can see like we're, we're doing fine though like um We've got our custom armor. We've got our nice weapon. We can get shot by these archers and it's not a big deal. So b being able to forge these things, it helps to just make the early game a little easier. Just even out the RNG if you never found good armor and never found good weapons, that kind of thing. So what I was saying about the uh, enchantments. Uh, uh, screen. Usually you're not going to be doing like enchantment on the first forge, but let's say you're interested in smithing or you're thinking this character might be a smith and you're thinking about what's, uh, what you might want to make in the next forge that you find. So you can always just press the press zero and look at the smithing menu and you can say, okay, uh, wouldn't it be cool if we took um, jeweler we made a ring of protection and then we added um, a pr one protection side and then we added we take artifice and we add plus strength and then well if you do plus strength it actually doesn't um, add it quite yet you have to go to numbers and then increase a special bonus there you go and then you can see the difficulty is 25. So if that's something you wanted to make, I just completely made that at random. It was the first things that caught my eye. But let's say that you wanted to make that for whatever reason. Uh, you're going to need to get to 25 smithing. Either by uh, increasing your, your smithing through your character sheet or increasing your grace. Uh, in one way or another. Let's look at a sword. Let's say uh, like a long sword. This is where I was saying you can take a uh, gondolin, slays orcs and trolls, Doriath, wolves and spiders, Nargathron, dragons and Rakar. Final rest is slays undead and gives you freedom of movement, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Uh, and then yeah, just these general. Um, enchantments, balanced defender. You can look through and see, see what these do. Uh, or artifice. So there's a lot to this menu. You can spend a lot of time making your nice um, custom item. Maybe you want a sword that um, just gives you some nice passives like free action, speed. Uh, just a general increase to your speed is extremely strong. So the difficulty is 42, so very few characters would be able to make this. Cheat death um, preserves you from death. 
like the amulet of last chances which i think just negates the killing blow i'm not really sure exactly the mechanics it doesn't heal you to full health or anything nice like that you can make an item that gives you abilities uh, so we can make like a sword that gives us the power ability but the type of ability that you can give an item depends on the type of item so uh, you can't make a sword that gives you sprinting you can make boots that give you sprinting for example uh, you can't make a sword that gives you keen senses but you can make a helmet that could make gives you keen senses uh, one other thing you can do so you can do sustains so you can sustain with some of your stats uh, to prevent monsters from draining your stats uh, you've got these melee powers so these are like weapon egos that a, you could just find a weapon that has these abilities on it or you can make it uh, you know in the dungeon or you can make one you can brand so we had a cold branded spear in the last game uh, you can do more specific slaying I just wanted to find where is um yeah okay so you can also give a stat penalty so normally you probably wouldn't want to do this but uh i could imagine um that you won't really really want to make a specialized item but it's too difficult for you the way you, that you could potentially uh do that is by um uh giving it a stat penalty and that will reduce the cost uh, or to reduce the difficulty of the item and make it uh, bring it within your range mm. just want to make sure uh, I guess the last thing to mention is something I like to do which is if you find like sometimes you find um, mithril gloves and they're like plus zero one d one and that's fine but you maybe you have better gloves at that point you might as well just melt them down and make something one of the things you can make that's really useful is a Thanorian lamp so it does require mithril it requires one pound of mithril but a Thanorian lamp will give you four radius to your light source uh, that's, uh, that's not really the right phrasing. It's a light source that will give you uh, four squares of light. Uh, which is really good. It's the best light source in the game, other than a Selmoril itself. And Feanorian lamps don't require fuel. So you don't have to carry around oil anymore. So it prevents you from having to worry about things like finding fuel in the dungeon or running out of fuel, that kind of thing. So they're really nice to find. And they can also be enchanted, but only with a few a few things. Um, I've never actually looked at it yet. Interesting. Uh, you can find like a Feanorian Lamp of True Sight or a Feanorian Lamp of Brightness in the dungeon, so I assume you can make those as well. Uh, and like I've said, I'm not I'm not like an expert in smithing. I I really I wish I could give better advice. Uh, I wish I were a hundred percent sure. See, this gore crow blinded us. I wish I were a hundred percent sure that everything I said was uh, was exactly accurate. But I might have to like correct myself in a future video. You know that kind of thing. Um. Yeah, I, I wish that I could give a, a really complete tutorial about how to build smithing character uh, but it's just not something that I've done a huge amount of like I've said I mostly make pacifist characters uh, I do some smithing here and there to, to bolster a character one of the things that it's useful for for example is let's say you've gotten pretty far into the game and you're at a point where you're encountering a lot of different types of monsters and maybe you want to make sure that you have all the different types of resistances. So let's say you found all the different types of resistances, except you never found resistance to fire anywhere in the dungeon. Then you can make that 
make yourself a ring and just you know cover your your poison fire cold resistances uh, or like i said you can make a fanorian lamp or you can um uh, you know, make something for for a very particular reason, something you're trying to accomplish. If you look at the ladder on angband.uk, you'll see a lot of really good smithing builds. A lot of higher level players, I feel like, do quite a bit of smithing on um, on their really powerful characters. It's not always the case, but often, like if you see a Morgoth killing character they'll have smithed, smithed something at some point there's this kind of this big group i really don't think it's going to be an issue because you know what we haven't done i'm not uh, i'm not being a good role model here as far as i'm uh, building my character i should be uh giving myself at least some song we are supposed three song we'll take uh staunching because it's going to be a combat character Staunching is, is very good. We're going to take Finesse. I've heard different things about whether Power or Finesse is better. Uh, I tend to take Finesse. Especially this character is going to be a bit of a, a balanced is the idea. Uh, and I'd like to get some criticals. But if you're taking a heavy weapon, definitely take Power. Uh, and that, that'll be it for now. That uses up all of our experience anyway. So I just want to make sure I'm I'm sort of showing the idea of continuing to build your character uh, as you play. Uh, but we're actually not going to play this character too much longer. Uh, we're getting to uh, almost 37 minutes and I've explained um, as much about uh, smithing as I think needs to be explained in, a, in an introduction video. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, feel free to ask on the on the forums or on the Discord. And unless um, in the next couple seconds, as I stall here, <laughs> unless I can think of anything else, I think that's a reasonable discussion about smithing. Uh, and so. I will go ahead and leave it there. We may or may not continue this character in the future. But certainly for next video, we'll be continuing our character from last time. Because that character is exciting and they found a cool spear and I want to play that character. And then if I'm being honest, I think after that we're, we'll go back to some pacifists. So I hope that was clear. Always feel free to ask questions. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.